From the Altai to the White Sea, the lands where Kazakh people rode their horses, the historical expedition will follow the footsteps of ancestors. The three years' journey was set out to the west. Kazakh traveler of the 21st century Sapari Skakov and his team have visited more than 20 countries in 70 days. A wonderful story of the great journey is featured in our program, In the Footsteps of Ancestors. Featuring today, what do the Kazakhs and Armenians have in common? What documents related to Kazakhstan are kept in the Matanadaran archive? What is the origin of the name of the settlement Kipshak in Armenia? In the 1990s, Kazakhstan was a part of the collapsed Soviet Empire. After gaining independence, the young republic moved steadily forward despite the difficulties. At present, Kazakhstan has achieved good political and economic indicators. This is a worthy continuation of the great history the historical expedition in the footsteps of ancestors is researching. The next destination after Azerbaijan is Armenia. Approaching Yerevan, the expedition stopped along the river, which is related to the history of the Kazakhs. The 89 kilometers long Kasag River is the left tributary of the Sevjur in Armenia. It starts from the gorge with the same name. The name Kasak is probably derived from the word Kazakh. The word Kasak is mentioned in the writings of the Arab scholar Al Kufi. He wrote about the Arab military leader Al Marwan ibn Muhammad who came to the valley of the river Kasakh with a 120,000-strong army in the 8th century and settled there. This is the period of the Arab-Hazar Wars. Hazars are a medieval Turkic-speaking people. Scientists hypothesize that the word Kazakh comes from the merger of the two words, Kas and Sak. All of these assumptions indicate a connection between the Kazakhs and the geographical names Kasakh in Armenia. Astana Yerevan direct flights have been launched just a few days before the arrival of the historical expedition. This is another evidence of the revival of the historical Kazakh Armenian relations. At present, friendly countries are strategic partners. Cooperation is strengthening every year. In seven months of 2017, the trade turnover between the countries amounted to over $2.6 million, which is 38% more compared with the same period last year. The countries are building up not only economic but also cultural and humanitarian ties. Director of the National Library of Armenia, Tigran Zargaryan, speaks about this. The Center of Kazakh Literature was opened in the National Library of Armenia in December 2016. The Kazakh National Library shared some valuable books in Kazakh. This connection is strengthening. The Turkic languages are taught at the Yerevan National University. The main universities of Kazakhstan and Armenia are contributing to cooperation between the libraries. Gumilyov Eurasian National University in Astana and the Armenian State University are working closely. Two years ago, the two sides started creating an anthology of Kazakh literature in Armenian. It will include works by Hawaja Ahmad Yasawi and writers and poets of present time. According to the head of the Department of Turkology, Alexander Safarian, they need to include the words of edification by the great Abai, as well as Muhtar Oezov's novel, The Path of Abai, in this work. Armenian readers are showing great interest in the works of the classics of the Kazakh literature.
Мы готовы и к сотрудничеству в области именно лингвистического. We are ready to cooperate in conducting a linguistic analysis of the Armenian Kipchak manuscripts. Armenian script, unlike other, is the most acceptable for disclosing all the secrets of the Turkic writing, since the Kipchak manuscripts are written in Armenian letters. This is a well-known fact. Арабская графика или еврейская графика – это общеизвестный научный факт. The portrait of a great abba is in a place of honor in Yerevan State University. The center of the Kazakh language, history and culture was opened here seven years ago. It is here where progressive Armenian students study the culture of the ancient Saka and Huns, the Turkic Kaganate and Deshtip Kipchak, as well as modern Kazakh literature. Among them is the postgraduate student of the Department of Turkology, a young scientist who, tirelessly, reread the novel epic, Abai Joli, translated by Shoshan Hachatran. Now I'm writing a thesis about Mutaro Rezov. Three years ago I passed an internship at the Gumyubyov Eurasian National University. I came to Armenia and now I'm writing my paper. There are Kazakh language classes in our center, which is like small Kazakhstan for me. The Matinadaran archive is the world's largest historical center where ancient manuscripts are kept. This is the national pride of the Armenian people. There is a monument to Saint Mezrop Mashtots in front of the building, the creator of the Armenian alphabet. The archive has a mind-blowing number of historical manuscripts and ancient documents. Among this huge mass are Kipchak sources. They call us, we are here. Для них была напис был написан словач армяно-кипчакский самых обиходных. The Armenian Kipchak dictionary was written for the Crimean Armenians in around the 12th century. Most of the words in it are in Armenian and Kipchak, but there are also translations from the Polish language. The dictionary mostly contains the words used in everyday life during the study. Armenians especially created the grammar of the Kipchak language. There are two historical events that justify the words of Aida Chalakshan about the Crimean Armenians. First, the Armenians moved to the Crimean Peninsula as a result of the rapprochement between the Bosporan and the Armenian kingdoms. The second wave of migration took place around the 11th century in the Byzantine period. After the fall of Ani, the capital of the well-known Armenian Bagrati dynasty, all its residents migrated to the territory of the present-day Ukraine, Moldova and Romania in large flows. It was the time when the hoofs of the Kipchak horses stepped onto the Armenian land for the first time. It is known that they raised their flag in Sudak after defeating the Pechenegs, the city of Siganak. On the bank of the Sirdaria is the first capital of the Kipchaks, then Sudak is their second major city. The Turks are still revered in this region. Many people on the Crimean Peninsula speak the Kipchak language. Here is the grammar of the Kipchak language written in Armenian letters. These exhibits prove that the Armenians used the Kipchak language along with their own. So there was a need to study the Kipchak language. That is, the Kipchak language was an instrument for learning the innovations of that time, was the language of interstate communication. There are many words similar to Kazakh in the grammar book of the Kipchak language written in Armenian. For example, Nehatar sounds like Nekatar in Kazakh and means Neshe or how much. Haushar, Uksar, Harshi, Karsay. They are almost similar words. This is perhaps the answer to the question is the Kazakh language derived from the Kipchak language? The state of Deshtikipchak 
exerted a tremendous influence on virtually all countries in the territory of the Eurasian continent. The Kipchak's government system was particularly useful. Its fragments are also present in Europe. However, we can say with confidence that there was no oppression. The national values of other nations have not suffered in any way. Вот интересно, что начиная с 1367 года there is an interesting information. The Armenians of the Crimean Peninsula translated part of the civil laws in the Code of Judicial Records, written by Mkhitar Ghosh, in the 12th century into the Kipchak language. The Kipchak language was the language of international communication at that time. In the Matinadaran archive, there is a lot of evidence that the Armenians have long used the Kipchak code, Tore Betiga. Tare Batiga is a code of Armenian Kipchak judicial records. The legal code was translated from Armenian into the Latin in 1519 and was approved by Polish king Sigismund I. Then, for convenience, it was translated into Polish and Kipchak languages. The document consists of three parts, introduction, secular laws, and additional articles for conduct of court records. Well-known lawyer Gairat Sapargaliev was one of the first who studied and adopted this valuable manuscript in the Kazakh language. Tori Batiga in the Kipchak language and the current constitution of Kazakhstan have much in common. For example, in the first paragraph of the Article 75 of the section Courts and Judicial Power of the Constitutional Law, it is written that in Kazakhstan judicial power belongs only to the courts. Article 5 of the Tori Batiga says the same. Tori Batiga, Code of Armenian Kipchak Court Records, Article 5. The court is the inquiry of all cases. The judge of the court must be literate, wise, intelligent, know the character of people and make a fair decision. Must have knowledge. To administer justice is a divine matter. The scale of the legacy of the Armenian Kipchak alphabet is very large and versatile. Therefore, comprehensive research is needed. There are many sources related to the Kazakh history in the archives of Yerevan. They refer to the legal sphere, philology, culture, and fiction. In the 12th, 13th centuries, that is, before the Mongol invasion, the Georgian army recruited Kipchak warriors. This is evidenced by the military base located near the village of Arich in the Arctic district of the Shirak region of Armenia. It was a training camp of the Kipchak warriors. Members of the expedition in the footsteps of ancestors went to the vicinity of the village of Arich, the head of the Matenadaran archives told about. Arich is a village with a population of 1,500 people. The settlement is very important from a historical point of view. There are many monuments telling about the glorious past of our ancestors. Even the ancient name of the village contains valuable historical information for the expedition members. Starting from the 1140 until 1947, the settlement was called Awul Kipshak. We have all the evidence, references, seals. The settlement was in all the documents. In 1947, Kipshak was renamed to Arich. This is just the official name of the settlement. Until now, the local population calls themselves residents of the village of Kipshak. They consider the Kazakhs to be their compatriots and wish only to strengthen relations with the people of the homeland of the fathers. A corner of the Armenian-Kazakh friendship was opened in the administration building.
Этот уголок был образован пять лет тому назад, в 2000... The corner was opened in 2012. It symbolizes friendship between the Kazakhs and the Armenians. Our relations with Kazakhstan have never been interrupted. There are a lot of books presented by Kazakhs in our library. Kipcha Kavank Monastery in the village of Arich was built in the 12th century. The most interesting thing is that you can trace Kazakh national ornaments in the architecture of this building. This place where we are now used to be called Kipcha Kavank. Now it is called Hari Chavank. This is a monastery. Our ancestors worshipped God here. Then in the 12th century, the Islamic religion has not been practiced here yet. They worship Tengri. The Kipchaks, who have lived here for more than 200 years, adopted the faith of the indigenous people. If you look closely, there is information about the Kipchaks on the walls of the monastery. One of the last dates back to 1696. In general, the surroundings of Arich are full of monuments about the past of the Kipchaks. Our ancestors are buried in this large burial mound, as can be seen from the tombstones. The architectural style of this building belongs to the 12th, 13th centuries. Some sources say that this was built after the invasion of Batu Khan. It was the time when the Kipchaks came to the Armenian land. They have lived in the area of the present Arich for more than 200 years. Therefore, apparently, this historical monument might have been built by the Kipchaks. In this regard, the work of Simeon Likashi dating back to the 17th centuries come into the mind. He wrote about the Armenian community on the Ukrainian territory. According to him, the Armenians from the Crimean Peninsula did not know their native language, but when they went to church, they prayed in the Kipchak, and they also conducted court records in this language. The ancient inhabitants of Arich, as well as the Kipchaks, believe that God is in heaven. If we continue our historical research, we can observe a very close connection between the Kazakh and Armenian people. We should be grateful to the Armenian people for preservation of historical monuments and burial places of our ancestors. They reconstructed them. Kazakhstan researchers are more than welcome to come here. I hope that historians will come here after us and they will continue their research. Of course, any such work will contribute to the enrichment of our history. In fact, the state of Deshta Kipchak was a powerful confederation that was the most influential in the historical arena for a long time and left its indelible mark on the world civilization. Many developed countries of that period sought for friendly relations with the state. Many rulers wanted to establish family ties with the ruling dynasty of the Kipchaks. The Armenian land abounds with valuable sources about the Kipchaks and related artifacts. For example, the name of the Artek district, where the village of Arich is located, also has its own peculiarity. It can be connected with the name of Khan Artek Sarihanuli. Historical sources say that Artek Khan arrived in the territory of Georgia and Armenia with the 40,000 strong troops. What have brought the Kipchak really here? We will tell you about it in our next film. Having completed the tour to Armenia, the historical expedition in the footsteps of ancestors is headed to Georgia.